that's leadership. Then, yeah. Forgiveness is a gift, but mm-hmm. repentance is also a gift. The quicker somebody repents is an indication of the closer they are to the Lord. Oh, wow. We're going to react to season four, episode two of The Chosen. I really like this episode. <laughs> yeah. He became who he was created to be. Yeah. And when we become who we're created to be, mm. we prepare the way mm-hmm. for the return of the Messiah. That's good. Yeah. How are you holding up? I don't exactly know what to say. Um, I thought I would be far worse. Apparently, Simon thinks so too. He keeps checking on me every five minutes. <laughs> like how you keep checking on me? It's a good friend. Mm-hmm. You knew John longer than any of us. Mm-hmm. But then you're. I'm what? I mean, you're. <laughs> then why do you need to check on me? Okay, (laughs) well, then I'll just, I'll say, you're a mystery. (laughs) That's good. You're fully God and fully man. (laughs) I didn't quite have the language. (laughs) Right, right, right. I love that. Still being developed. Yeah. (laughs) I love that they just had him say, it's a mystery, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a great way to capture it without... Like, uh, you're right. human, but you're God, you know. I mean, mystery is such a, a great word for mm-hmm. for things of of the the book, right? Exactly. You know, it's mm-hmm. like we, we love that word, mystery. Because mm-hmm. mystery doesn't doesn't mean, like, bad or wrong or weird. It just means, like, it it takes some time mm-hmm. to figure it out, right. you know. And, and it's worth putting all mm-hmm. your effort into, you know. So, yeah. yeah, mysteries are fun. Right. <laughs> It actually comes from the word Mysterion. Was it like a, a, a villain or <laughs> a DC villain? Marvel, <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> but it means like something that was hidden mm-hmm. has now been revealed. Oh, that's cool. Which is pretty cool because you're seeing, yeah. you know, God who is hidden, mm-hmm. right? We don't see him. Right. And he's now what? Revealed. Being revealed. Ooh, that's cool. In Yeshua. I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. Pretty stale. Pretty. Pretty stale. Pretty stale. <laughs> oh. Tastes like Elisha's bones. Galilean humor. I guess. <laughs> Northerners. <laughs> Can we be laughing? Why not? You know, some of the moments in which we laugh the hardest come around the time of a funeral. (laughs) Our hearts are so tender. All our emotions right at the surface. Laughter and tears, closer than ever. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I sat many a shiva with John when we were kids, and he could not hold a sullen mood for seven straight days. (laughs) So the tradition for sitting Shiva, mm-hmm. which means seven, basically, okay. uh, is goes all the way back to, they think, actually the book of Job. Oh, wow. So, you know, Job ways back there. has this terrible mm-hmm. uh, experience, Tragic, right? Tragic, yeah. Family and all these things that happened to him. And then, you know, his friends come to him and it, to mourn and comfort him. And it says that they sat with him for Mm. seven days and seven nights. And Job's the oldest book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So this is a really old uh, Jewish tradition. Interesting. So it it goes way back, uh, and then it goes all the way to the present as well. Because it's not something that's prescribed in the Torah or something like that. right? Yeah, it's not like a commandment or something. Like when someone passes away, you should mourn for X amount of days, but rather it's a tradition. It's like a tradition from the scripture. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Job's not Jewish. Job predates Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. 
Right. So this is just an ancient biblical hmm. uh, kind of pattern that that the Jewish people, mm-hmm. you know, embraced, if mm-hmm. you will. I think it's important, and they pulled out some important things about grief and mourning there. That mm-hmm. There's no there, there's no right way to do it, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. And and I think what they said about the intermingling of laughter and tears is a hundred percent true. So true. You know, and your emotions are just right at the surface. And, right. You know, you need that cathartic laughter. Yeah, that's good. You need those breaks from mm-hmm. grief and you need the deep grief as well. Right. The, the crying, the moaning, the groaning, the right. all that stuff. It's like yeah. necessary for your soul. And I, mm-hmm. you know, I think there's a, you know, our traditionally in the, you know, in the West, it's like mm-hmm. you have a visitation and a funeral and then you're supposed to be done. Right. So I like this seven day right. biblical tradition. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I know that a lot of times when somebody dies and you don't know what to do for sure for them. Yeah. And I usually encourage people to just do something. Yeah. Because if you say, oh, if you ever need anything, let me know. But they're not going to let you know because they don't even know what they need. Right. You know, so it's like just show up and give them food. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's true. And if they invite you in to sit down, great. Great. You know, yeah. But just showing them that that you love them. I think, too, and even from our our own story of just, you know, learning to grieve together, like just being together is important. Yeah. And knowing that you don't have to have the right words at the right time. Right. I mean, if the Lord is like prompting you to say something, great. And if not, actually presence is just a real gift. Absolutely. Yeah, the comfort comes from his presence and then the presence of others. Absolutely. Better than you do. What? What's going on with you? Right now, the only thing keeping you in Caesar's good graces are your revenues. They're up. Spettacolore, Dominus. But you really need... Spettacolore. To do something. Don't become infamous for overseeing the town where a revolution started. Hail Caesar. I feel like we haven't seen this part of Atticus before. Yeah. You know, he's like he's usually calm, cool, collected, yeah. right? And eating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Um, the reason why Atticus is so agitated here, I mean, we haven't seen this part of Atticus before. You know why, Sam? It's low blood, low blood sugar. <laughs> That's right. He's he's the never eating Atticus in this scene. Oh, poor guy. So wonder why he's like, get get him some chips. <laughs> I bet we're going to Mount Hermon. I haven't seen snow in ages. Isaiah, your sins are like scarlet. They, they shall be, be as white as snow. snow. What would Mount Hermon have to do with John? We are still within the seven days of Shiva. Oh, well, Shiva is just as much about the living as it is in the deceased. Simon just said something really cool. He said that the sitting Shiva is just as much about the living as it is the dead. I didn't quite catch it. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed it out. And that reminds me of Kaddish. Hmm. So, you know, in Jewish yep. tradition, during Shiva, in this year of mourning, you say Kaddish for your loved one who's died. Mm-hmm. And when you recite the prayer... It's actually a prayer all about this this glorification of God yeah. and who he is right. and what he's done and his sovereignty and his, mm-hmm. you know, all these amazing things about him. Yeah. Which then brings what? Encouragement, strength, For sure. hope mm-hmm. to the living. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. In yeah. honor of... The person who had died, right, and it's it, for it, the living. It's not a prayer for the dead, right? Exactly. Which, if you know, you, if you hear the, you know, the, the the phrase or something like that, you might think, oh, well, that's weird. They're praying for the dead, mm. but that it's a good encapsulation right. of of what the mourner's cottage is. It's not a prayer for the dead, right? It's a glorification of God, encouragement, yeah. reminding mm-hmm. ourselves of yeah. of the reality of the kingdom, even, mm-hmm. and then praying for peace, right? So mm-hmm. it's good, which. Shalom, we're like mm-hmm. this, right? Mm-hmm. This not just in some sort of war sense, peace, right? right? But right. That, yeah, this comfort yeah. and this rest mm-hmm. of your soul, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's so good. Yeah. 
you want to go deeper in your understanding of God, the Bible, and why Israel matters today, you can become a Grafted Ambassador. You'll get our five-week online course for free. You'll be able to join our monthly exclusive live Zoom. Exclusive. And we'll even send you a Grafted Trucker hat. That's right, so click on the link in the description below. People seem to think they know why I'm here. <laughs> Do you think I've come to give peace on Earth? I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I mean division, see, within households and beyond. When someone chooses to follow me, it may mean that in one house, five will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Why? We see it with Raymond, her father. It is not my intention to divide families. But the cost of following me can mean that people will be hated by those closest to them because of their unbelief. But it isn't honoring father and mother one of the commandments? Honoring your parents is one of the highest social and spiritual obligations, but it is not higher than following God. I think they did such a good job explaining this principle here. It's a, it's a hard one. It is. Right? Yeah. If you take like one passage mm -hmm. and you only read that, mm -hmm. you know, leave your father and parents and, mm -hmm. but then what about honor? I mean, honor your father and mother. And like, right. I just think they did a really good job of showing, I mean, he said it just succinctly mm -hmm. is that yeah. it, if you don't follow God, mm -hmm. because he says in other passages, they asked him, what's the greatest commandment? Exactly. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that comes first. And then it's love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. I like that Andrew asked the question, hey, well, what about we're supposed to honor our father and mother, right? You're like, I mean, that, I don't know that, I don't remember if that's like in that portion of scripture or near there or something mm -hmm. like that. But my guess is that when Yeshua says something like this, because he says, you know, let the dead bury their dead or mm -hmm. let, you know, like yeah. anyone who hates or loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of being my disciple, right? And you, yeah. you have to hate your father or mother and in order, you know, like very strong language. Right. They had to have been thinking, but wait, 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 we're supposed to love our neighbor mm -hmm. as ourselves, or we're supposed to, you know, uh, honor our father and mother. Like they had right. to be wrestling with these Absolutely. things. They had to elicit because right? they're, because they're, they're following this rabbi. They're right. wrestling with these things all the time. Right. And so, and they know the scripture. And they know the scripture. And they don't just know it from some mental ascent. They're, right. they're trying to live the scripture. Exactly. You know? Right. And so these are necessary questions right. in order to ask, in order to, to be a good disciple. Right. So I love the wrestle there. Right. Which is good. And this is a patriarchal society. For sure. <laughs> so, I mean, we can't even relate to how right. much of the patriarchal right. society really all ancient societies right. were the familial yeah. communal identities are right. strong more so than, right. than we have any idea of in, in the west yeah. here so so her doing this would have been like wow mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is well even just doing this is dishonoring her father that's kind right. of the whole point right, right? you're right. going against your father's wishes mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, i'm glad they talked about it uh, i think they're using this you know relationship to kind of show mm -hmm some biblical truths, which I like. Yeah. You could even see it in like James and John, right? They worked with their father, but when he called them, they left their father and the crew and the boat, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, we are abandoning the family business. Right. Right. You know, but uh, mm -hmm. it seems at some level that there was, uh, right. you know, some uh, appreciation or love for Yeshua from, you know, their parents yeah. because even their mom was ended up being at the, the crucifixion, right. right? And so they mm -hmm. were obviously disciples as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. it's like, oh, man, you're wrestling with that too there. So, Thomas, what are you preparing to give Rema as mohar? Oh, well, she made it clear she doesn't need any. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm gonna borrow Thomas. Bro, just get her a present, okay? Like, Definitely get and, her a and present. And think about it. Yeah. Like, don't don't get a gift card. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's exactly right. 
gift card, you know what? A gift card doesn't even count. <laughs> For all the guys watching right now, if you don't know this, yeah, it's true. Somehow, and I, I get it. It yeah. doesn't make sense to me either. Okay, gift cards are great. Like I love gift cards, but just so you know, gift cards do not count. Yeah. yeah. I wish. I think when you get married mm -hmm. and you have your like guy little tool shower, yeah, or whatever it's this called, should, this should be in there. Somebody should say, just so you know, yeah. gift cards don't count. Don't count. <laughs> Let me save you some sweat, bro. Like. <laughs> That's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Not giving your wife a gift, specifically taking her at her word when she said she doesn't want a gift. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, Peter. Take it from your married friend. Hmm? <laughs> These words do not mean what you think they mean. <laughs> Let me explain to you something. Wait, 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 wait. That's a deep reference. That is so good. That's a deep reference. I do not think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> Inconceivable! He's quoting the Princess Bride. Did Let's you go. know? Let's go. The Shahar, do you like Princess Bride? Like, <laughs> I, I want to know. I want to know. I love it. They're approaching Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. according to the sign, mm -hmm. which is nowhere near the Sea of Galilee. It's like 25, 30 miles north. Like they said, they were heading up toward Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. Driving 25 miles, that's one thing. They just walked. You're talking, you know, if you walk two or three miles an hour, that's what, 12, 13, I don't know. So it's multiple day journey. Or a super long day. Yeah. They're like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, yep. this is like, they're just trusting Yeshua and following him. And this is what it means to walk with the Lord. It's good. I'm at peace. John wanted to run to them. Hmm? You have to ask me how I am. I'm sorry. How are you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do like this. Uh, you know, we're seeing them teach and listen and talk on the way. Yeah. We don't get a whole lot of like in the Gospels of like, hey, while they were walking from here to here, they talked mm -hmm. about this. But... Again, like you're saying, they're walking 25 miles. It's right. like there would have been a ton of conversation. And, you know, some of the teachings that are written down may have been on the way. You For know? sure. But it's like this This is a great visual of what life as a follower of Jesus right. for those, you know, whatever, three years mm -hmm. was like. The Canaanite god Baal he used to be worshipped here. Actually, many places, but especially here. Why? The water. They regarded Baal as the god of rain. Spring poured us out of a cave in the side of the rock face there. The fountain head of the Jordan. To sound out the depths of the spring, they let the rock down on a row. Never reach the bottom. Welcome to the gates of hell. Mm. We're looking at Caesarea Philippi here mm -hmm. and You've got two shrines. One is to the god Pan, mm. okay, which is that half goat, okay, half man, uh, creepy reality. Mm -hmm. Caesarea Philippi also had this temple to Zeus, mm. okay, and Zeus is like understood to be God incarnate. Mm. Which is really interesting. Mm. And then they just mentioned Baal. They just mm. a little altar to Baal there. Because mm. uh, actually, the site goes all the way back to Alexander the Great. Okay. When it was first huh. uh, developed. But Zeus is just this development, actually, of Baal. Mm. So mm -hmm. Baal mm -hmm. becomes... Kind of morphs into... Zeus. Interesting. And so it's this similar pagan deity mm. that's this antithesis, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of the God of Israel. Interesting. It's so, it's gross that it's this God incarnate, mm -hmm. you know, ugh, it's, it's yucky. Yeah. Wow. Are there goats for sacrifice in their temple? No. Goats? Something much worse. The word panic comes from the word Pan. Hmm. And th this is like a ancient Greek okay. myth. You know the Battle of Marathon, kind of this famous 
story of the man running 26.2 miles and okay. telling about the victory okay, yeah. of the Greeks over the Persians. And then he dies. <laughs> Which I always tell my marathon friends, do you really want to run that far? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in the Greek mythology, Pan, mm. this goat demon actually like causes panic among the Persians to help the Athenian wow. Greeks to victory. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. No, I, 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 if I had known that, I forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I really like this depiction of Caesarea Philippi yeah, because you can go to the modern mm -hmm. archaeological site. It's yeah. a national park in Israel, and it looks like this, mm -hmm. you know, geographically at least. They, didn't, they don't have the temples there, of course. Right. But you can even see here there's like a cave kind of yeah. behind mm -hmm. this altar and temple to Pan on the left. Mm -hmm. And so... They, I think they've done a good job of kind of depicting mm -hmm. what it could have looked like. And then, of course, they have this red <laughs> color. I was going to ask about that. What's that about? This red, I'll call it a Herodian mm -hmm. red. So Herod the Great you know, built all these different structures, and he apparently loved the color red because... <laughs> You can see this red at Masada, mm, yeah. you know, this um, winter fortress. Mm -hmm. And Herod built this temple to Zeus in honor of Caesar Augustus, mm. which is why it's called Caesarea. Yeah. Philippi ends up being named after his uh, son. Mm. So uh, Phil Herod, you know, mm -hmm. Philip Herod, mm -hmm. and a lot of Herods. Mm -hmm. It's cool to be able to, I mean, one, to see the site in Israel is amazing. And it's actually a really beautiful location. Yeah, it's water everywhere. Yeah, it's gorgeous. But then you have this just really gross, right. even feeling there. And so it's kind of cool to like overlay this on top of it mm -hmm. and kind of see the structures and even the Herodian red, like you're saying, and uh, to get a, a visual of what in the world was going on here. Yeah. yeah. We travel north of Capernaum for the fresh fish not to discover great minds. <laughs> and yet, as unlikely as it may seem, from this backwater village in the Upper Galilee has arisen an intellect so enterprising, probing, and formidable. We cannot help but rejoice in our good fortune in finding Shmuel Bar Yosef and welcoming him to this highest council where he succeeds Rabban Seled in the 70th chair. So I do like his opening here. Right? Yeah. He's, he's basically talking about how the Galileans mm -hmm. were looked down upon. Right. They talk funny. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the country bumpkins. Mm -hmm. Backwater, he says. Exactly. You know, right. So the that's how it was understood. So mm -hmm. I think they're doing a good job of showing you how the Jerusalem uh, elites, if you will, mm -hmm. would have looked at them. It's interesting. And then, you know, the Sanhedrin is made up of... 70, you know, Jewish leaders, really 70 plus one, because you've got the high priest as well. Okay. So, and really the majority of the Sanhedrin, uh, we think were Sadducees, actually. Oh, really? So, okay. my guess is the way they're depicting, you know, you can't always tell. Sometimes when you look, even today, uh, in Israel, you know, you can have different sects just based upon... You know, they wear their uh, mm -hmm. their different hats or their mm -hmm. different ribbon on this side. And so I'm not exactly sure what, you know, a Sadducean, uh, you know, traditional garb would have right, been right. versus Pharisaic. And your guess is uh, better than mine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the acts and whereabouts of Jesus of Nazareth shall be reported to this council immediately. Senior leaders in every district should question and expose Jesus. Listen carefully to what he says and seek to entangle him in his own teaching. If we call him into exposing himself by his own teaching in a way that people will easily recognize as heresy, they will turn from him. 
We can dilute his influence. As to what happens if he is trapped and brought into us. Even if we find him blasphemous, I encourage you to resist the urge to enact the justice of the law of Moses. Stoning. Well, it's not only a messy business, but stoning a preacher of the people risks chaos we cannot afford. We, we must keep our houses of power separate. We cannot afford to be perceived as hoping for disorder in any way. Pilate, as young and in over his head as he is, will never allow that, and we can't give him another reason for doing something rash. Let Rome enforce its own man-made laws, and if it works in our favor, fine. We will concentrate our efforts on preserving God's law. Yeah, this is another cringe scene, right? Right. Where you're like, it's hard to see the leadership of Israel that's plotting against Yeshua. Right, right. And then, but in a really deceptive way, you know, mm. trying essentially to use Rome right. against mm -hmm. Yeshua mm -hmm. in order to, you know, preserve their power and their positions. So it's hard to watch. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they're supposed to be, you know, for, they're supposed to be kingdom right. men right. by definition, right? Yep. This is the authority and leadership of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. though they are being occupied by Rome, right, uh, they still have this huge, uh, you know, impact oh, on yeah. society and culture and people oh, yeah. and values and worship and all these things. The Sanhedrin is majority Sadducees, and these are the people who are what in charge of the mm -hmm. sacrificial system. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, most priests come from the Sadducean. Mm. Uh, background. Sadducee is like is from the word Zadok. Oh, okay. okay. And so, and Zadok was, you know, this high priest mm -hmm. from the time of King David. And so, it's like this specific line of priests. Mm -hmm. Sadducees are priests. Mm -hmm. Pharisees, you don't have to be a, a priest to be a Pharisee. Okay. It, regardless, it's just like a, ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then remember that Caiaphas, the high priest here, was. Appointed by Rome, mm. you know. Yeah, but I, I, that may not be something that people know, right? But that's kind of weird. And it's not how it's supposed to right, be, right? Right. It's supposed to be from, yeah, the line of Aaron, mm -hmm. and then yeah, there's this. You see it through actually Phineas or Pinchas, mm -hmm. and then yeah. Zadok. You see this tradition, but then, uh, yeah, there is this yeah Roman occupation, mm -hmm. and. The leadership here, uh, the corrupt ones, are in league with Rome. Right. Uh, and what's really interesting about Caiaphas is that he's the part of this almost like high priestly dynasty, I would call it, hmm. where his father-in-law, uh, Annas, who we also see in mm -hmm. the biblical text, yeah. had five sons, hmm. and all his so all of these, or five of his sons at least, end up being the high priest at some point. Wow. And Caiaphas, who was his son-in-law, mm -hmm. and he had a grandson. You know, usually the high priest would die. Yeah. And then, right, his son would take over. Take over, yeah. Right, with like Aaron and then mm -hmm. uh, Eliezer. Yeah. But here, it's like Annas is still alive, and he still, he really has so much influence, you might imagine. Right. So if he's still alive right. for at least many of these different iterations of his uh, children. It's strange. So it becomes this, like, sometimes I'll even say high priests, plural. It's like, yeah. wait a minute. Why right. does it say high priests, plural? Yeah. That's because it's like this ruling class, and they're a part of the Sanhedrin. And, so. yeah, Rome would, like, you know, get mad at somebody, install him, remove him. Yeah, okay. Uh, throughout the first century. I mean, Caiaphas actually has like one of the longest high priestly reigns. He was in there for about 20 years. Oh, wow. Uh, so, but then when Pilate gets 
uh, removed from office by Rome, mm-hmm. they end up removing uh, Caiaphas as well. Gotcha. So, you know, I mean, this is where Rome's really pulling the strings yep. uh, even on what's happening in the leadership in Israel. Interesting. Rabbi, this place. Respectfully, Rabbi, why did you bring us here? It's an abomination. <laughs> That's a pretty strong word, Andrew. Rabbi, doing Shiva? Should we avoid dark places out of fear? Or should we be light to them? Like Simon and Judas were on their mission. You think my cousin would be afraid of this cave? (laughs) Do you think he would be so appalled by what happens in that temple over there that he couldn't stand to be in this place? Who do people say the Son of Man is? I love this setup here mm-hmm. because he's taken them to this, you know, such this pagan place, Gentile city. Mm-hmm. It's in the region of the Bashan, mm-hmm. which is talked about all throughout the Tanakh. Yeah. You know, this is like a, it's known for its, you know, just pagan altars all around. You know, mm-hmm. Mount Hermon is close by, which mm-hmm. is. Uh, you know, a high place, Yep. right? So yep. we know that that's where uh, different pagan cults love that. For sure. So he's intentionally coming here and then asking what? This identity question of who do you say that I am mm-hmm. in the context of mm-hmm. this evil? And Bashan even is known as like the place of the serpent. No way. In Ugaritic, because it goes way huh. back. Baal. Yep. But now it's manifest in Zeus. Mm-hmm. And he goes, so you've got this incarnate apost- uh, uh, apostasy, you know, yeah. in Zeus yeah. and Caesar right. and, and Pan and like, Baal. I was like, you've kind of got it all. He's like, well, who do you say that I am? Mm. It's important to realize that you could just skim through this and be like, oh, okay. And then they went here and then they mm-hmm. did this. And then it's like, well, knowing the context makes it way right. bigger of a deal especially yeah. going to this place mm-hmm. and i like how they're portraying how uncomfortable the disciples are totally they're like this this is unclean this is gross right. this is it. like abomination we know what yeah what we know what they're doing in there like mm-hmm. it's a horrible disgusting idolatry yeah. he's taking them to the heart of the heart idolatry right uh, some say you are elijah the one who preaches repentance hmm. Others say Jeremiah, because he was rejected by the leaders of his time. And still others say one of the prophets, those that spoke on God's behalf. Okay, wh- what are we going to have to do, huh? Cast lots? Nathaniel, this is your moment. Be yourself. Some say John the baptizer. Which obviously isn't true. Okay. Well, that's everyone else. But who do you say that I am? You? You are the Christ. The son of the living God. These carved statues of Baal and Pan and other idols that we passed, they're dead and decaying, but we worship a living God. And you... You are his son. I love that they're showing Peter... Uh, being emotional here, yeah. or Simon being emotional here, yeah. of like this this moment where he mm. said, "Well, my father's revealed this to you," yeah. and he's like, "You are the Messiah." Mm-hmm. He first says that, which is this. It's really this kingly declaration. Yeah, the he's anointed saying, one. Yes. Yeah. You are the true king of Israel. Yeah. That's what he's really saying for sure. You are because again, who built this site? Herod. Mm-hmm. Who's That's this good. false king of Israel? Yep. Then you've got this false king of the empire, mm-hmm. Caesar. Right. Right? And he's saying, no, you are the true king wow. of Israel. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Just even that first part of the statement mm-hmm. is a huge statement in and of right. itself. You're the mm-hmm. Messiah, the anointed one, the anointed king, mm-hmm. the true king of exactly. Israel. Right. But the phrase goes on. It doesn't stop there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You're the son of the living God. Yeah. And it's like, even they, they, they kind of tease that out a little bit right. in what he's saying here. But like, these right. gods are dead. Mm-hmm. This stuff 
isn't real. Is right. car, they're carving them, and, and that's that's right. throughout scripture. It's like those who make idols will become like them. Mm, that's good, right? Yeah, right. And he's saying, no, you're yeah. the, the son of the living God. Right. Massive statement. Caesar is not the son <laughs> of God. That's good. He is yeah. not God. Right. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. All your life, you've been called Simon, one who hears. But today, I call you Peter. Rock. Name changes again is about identity. Yeah, that's good. And I love it because she was seeing Peter for who he really is, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> and what he's going to become, mm-hmm. and uh, you know his intended destiny mm-hmm. yeah, is to what? It's to be a rock. That's awesome. Yeah. To be this foundation of the new covenant kingdom. Mm-hmm. That's being birthed through Yeshua Himself, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. they're His children, right here, mm-hmm. and He's discipling them into this new covenant uh, reality. Yeah, and so a name change is is warranted in that sense, right? And it reminds me of like the original name change in Scripture, mm-hmm. which is Abram mm-hmm. or Avram to Abraham, mm-hmm. which He goes from. No, you're not just a father. You're to be a father of what? Nations. Many yeah. nations, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, I think there's that play is happening here, too, because why? Because the new covenant kingdom yeah. is going to be birthed out of what? Mm. Israel and the Jewish people. Yeah. Peter and the boys. Yep. Ephesians uh, 2 says it's built on the foundation yeah. of the prophets and apostles. Exactly. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeshua being the chief mm. cornerstone, right? Yep. But then the new covenant kingdom is built on top of that. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, that's what's happening here. And there's mm-hmm. a name play because Peter means rock, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But I just love that this is in complete uh, continuity even yeah. with going back to Abraham because right. he said, well, I want many nations For sure. to be a part of this. For sure. The Lord does say to uh, I can't remember if it's Isaac or Jacob, but he says mm-hmm. that you will be a kahal goyim, mm. meaning you will be a community of yeah. nations. Yeah, which is really interesting. Goyim <laughs> means nations right. in Hebrew, right? And kahal is like the name for gathering. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's what's translated sometimes as church or synagogue, or you know, it's like this gathering of people right. from the nations. But that's the purpose of God calling the patriarchs from the beginning absolutely and so this is just a continuation of that now in this new covenant Mm -hmm. reality Mm -hmm. so i love what you're saying well and like what you said it's a name is identity right and i the identity here is you guys are going to go be a light to the nations Mm -hmm. that's good (laughs) yeah the great commission's coming up soon (laughs) right stay tuned stay tuned just a couple chapters later here (laughs) that is on this rock that i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is a place of death. And I brought you here to tell you that death has no power to hold my redeemed people captive. I love that. Death has no power to hold my redeemed people captive. True. So, because <laughs> he's saying hell here, but the Greek word is Hades. Mm-hmm. And the Hebrew word is Sheol. Hmm. And Hades is from Greek mythology, actually. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is interesting where the Bible actually has Greek mythology in it. <laughs> <laughs> and But Hades is the holding place of the dead. Yeah. And actually it becomes personified. So Hades is this like God, mm. you know, who's personifying death and personifying this holding place of the dead. Mm. And, but then Yeshua is saying, but the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And the redeemed mm-hmm. won't be able to be held captive yeah. in Hades. Right. 
Right. This is a big That's deal. Good. That's good. Yeah. And this, I, I think they have to. Be, they don't. They have. I think no idea what he's saying. Right. <laughs> right? Because he, he's talking about the fact that when he's going to be the firstborn from the dead. Right. 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 I mean, it's really interesting because Greek mythology, mm -hmm. they have these different, you know, legends, myths. Yeah. Where different gods go down to Hades mm -hmm. and try to like set the captives free or bring people back up from the dead. Huh. Because I live, you also will live. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven the end of Matthew 16, then he says he's going to actually die and be raised on the third day. Oh, so he goes he goes all the way there. Yeah, he's he's saying it. Wow. It's whole, he who has an ear, let him hear. Right. right. Right? It's all there. He's actually saying, no, I'm going to go there. I'm going to defeat mm -hmm. Hades. Mm. And remember, Hades is the brother of Zeus. I mean, he's, he's going right after mm -hmm. the principalities, the powers, all the Greek... Yeah, because Greek mythology, there's like some truth to some of the evil and the sure. understanding of sure. what's happening here. Right, and he's saying, yeah, and I'm going to go after all that, and I'm going to defeat all that, mm. and I'm going to do exactly uh, what my father sent me to do. Right, which was to set the captives free. Yeah, which of course sounds a lot like what coming out of Egypt. Right, oh, right. Like that's just. Who he is, mm -hmm. it's what he does, and in, and in and in that coming out of Egypt, there was a defeating of the gods. Exactly, of that's what Egypt, it said. It's right? like, that's good. And then this is this defeating of yeah. the gods of the underworld, right. however you want exactly. to say it. He is yeah. the King of Kings yeah. and the Lord yeah. of Lords. He said, "I saw Satan fall like lightning, right, mm -hmm. and defeats the principalities and powers. And how does he do it?" <laughs> He does it, so it's interesting because a lot of times this Matthew 16 passage, mm -hmm. people will use it in terms of spiritual warfare, about binding and loosing. Oh, yeah. And it's true, and I think it's a it's a secondary kind of application. I mm -hmm. think the primary understanding is about authority mm -hmm. that we were talking about. But Yeshua's understanding of high-level warfare, of spiritual warfare, is this right here. Yep. It's humility. Yep. Right? It yeah. says, he says, I could call down legions of angels, but that's not how he does it. That's not how he sets the captives free. Mm -mm. He gives himself, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. that's how he does that's it, you know? Does it. It's love and humility. It's love and humility, and that's how, and then he comes up out of the grave, mm. you know? Mm. I mean, that's this true humility, yeah. and what's amazing is that uh, in Ephesians 3, he says, when Jew and Gentile come together in unity, mm -hmm. he says that, that what? That's this demonstration to the principalities and powers of the manifold wisdom of God. Yeah, yeah. That, that actually our unity mm -hmm. is high-level warfare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Because it's this humility required. Wow when we come together in unity. Mm. There is no unity without humility because mm -hmm. you got to come together and love people that you maybe would never have wanted to <laughs> love before. Right. Right? right. It demands that That's unity it. and yeah. he knows that. Mm -hmm. And so he's putting it as this requirement for us to what? We, we all say when we be conformed into the image of Yeshua. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And he's saying, yeah, it's it's going to have to happen. And that means you've got to what love your brothers as yourself. Exactly. Second commandment, the fullness exactly. of second commandment love. And that's what that's what Paul's talking about in Philippians two of this. Have the attitude of Messiah mm -hmm. and, and consider others as more significant in exactly. yourselves. And that's that's this attitude of Yeshua right. to lay down everything yeah. in humility and in love mm -hmm. unto right mm. that's so good. that is exactly what Yeshua did so good mm. amen I just got saved now nah, right. <laughs> you have the authority to declare the truth to others that I am declaring to you that the repentant have a place in the kingdom of heaven you 
have confessed that I am the Christ. And you will influence many others to make the same confession in time. But I will explain more later. What's happening here is what I would call a kingdom transfer of authority. That's good. Yeah. I mean, he, he's giving, what? He says the keys of the kingdom. I've given you the keys mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Well, what are keys? Mm -hmm. They're authority. Authority, yeah. To open, to close. Right. He says here to bind and to loose. Mm -hmm. And well, what is binding and loosing uh, in, you know, actually in a Jewish context, uh, it means like allowing and forbidding. Mm. Like, it's really interesting because they were talking about the Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish authority at the time. Right. And then what's happening is Yeshua is transferring the authority from the Sanhedrin to yeah. Peter and the boys. Yeah. I mean, it, and it only makes sense because to have the, the authority of the new covenant kingdom, mm -hmm. you have to follow the new covenant king. For sure. Sure. Like you, you can't yeah. walk in authority mm -hmm. of the kingdom if you don't believe in the king. Yeah, it's good. So that's why there has to. There's this necessary transfer. Mm -hmm. I think is why he's making such a big deal of yeah. this. And you know what? I just realized. I mean, maybe they. I'm assuming they meant to do this. Earlier scene, Yosef is getting dressed and stuff. And he pulls out a key. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, I see what you did there. Yeah, okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> keys to the kingdom, authority transfer. Mm -hmm. And keys mean authority. Mm -hmm. And in this Jewish first century, second century Jewish context, we know because in the Mishnah, it actually says that the keys of the kingdom mm -hmm. were transferred from the Sanhedrin to the rabbis. So we, we actually have a very similar language huh. in rabbinic literature arguing that the authority was transferred from the Sanhedrin to the rabbis. Mm -hmm. And here, mm -hmm. and you could also see this in other passages, mm -hmm. it says that, I think Yeshua is clearly saying that this authority is transferring mm -hmm. to these new covenant disciples. Totally. Totally. And it's it's cool, to too, to see after his resurrection, he's saying, all authority has been given to me, right? In Revelation, we see him, he's saying, I hold the keys of death and Hades, right? Exactly. It's like he is the one with all authority. Yes. He gives his disciples authority. Yes. They right. spread the gospel, spreading his kingdom rule exactly. and authority. It's just, right. it's, it's a beautiful plan. Right. <laughs> and in some sense... You have Peter is the first one mm -hmm. who is acknowledging that Yeshua is the king. Yeah. Right? right. The rightful king of yep. Israel. Right. And, this, and it, so we ha now have a human mm -hmm. or humans here that are acknowledging mm. who Yeshua is. Mm. And when that happens, yeah. then like you just said, he is now able to what? Ambassadorial role. Give them yep. the authority. Yep. Right? Because yep. they've acknowledged him as right. the king. Right. And so then he can now... What? Endorse them as his ambassadors. Exactly. There have been times where Peter has been overly harsh with you. And that has not pleased my father in heaven, nor has it pleased me. Then why? I will say this is not always the consideration. But I would simply ask, who harmed the other first? Uh, I guess in the abstract by accepting the job from Rome. I... No. No. Not in the abstract. In fact. Okay, by turning my back on our people and then by spying on him for Quintus and even coming within hours of turning him over to Rome and possibly ruining his fa family's life. And you've never apologized for this. No, I just... I... I want to forget about that time. The same way Mary wants to forget about her time. And I want to keep...
keep the peace. Apologizing to him would only cause an argument. The group already has enough of those. They're having one right now. There is no peace when two of my followers hold resentment in their heart towards one another. You know what you must do. Jesus said this phrase in that in that little discussion there that when two of my followers are holding resentment with against each other, there is no peace, right? It just made my it made my brain go back to the Sermon on the Mount when he says, You've heard it said, You shall not murder. Whoever murders is laudable judgment. But I say that everyone who's angry with his brother, you know, it goes on and on. But he says if you're if you're there at the altar offering your gift, and there you remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift at the altar and go be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Mm. I think it's just important to note that that principle of what he said, I think, is, is rooted in, in the Sermon on the Mount, rooted in that, that phrase is that Jesus wants peace between his disciples. He wants peace between us as brothers and sisters in Messiah and, and, and unity and what we were talking about earlier about unity, humility, like it, it has to perpetuate in our lives. And so when we mm-hmm. do sin against our brother, or our sister, we have to make it right. And and he was saying that repentance or that forgiveness is a gift, but mm-hmm. repentance is also a gift. Right. And so, uh, because it it allows us to repair uh-huh. relationship right. and allows us to receive forgiveness and extend forgiveness mm-hmm. and 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 create right relationship. The goal right. is always relationship. So right relationship. So it just made my made my brain go back to the mm-hmm. to the sermon on the mount. That's really good, and it reminds me how Derek Prince used to say that. The quicker somebody repents is an indication of the closer they are to the Lord. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Right? So it's like you, we should be, man, quick. as soon as it happens and it yeah. doesn't take us days mm. or weeks or mm. however long. Like right. He was just saying that's it's an indicator wow. of how close you are to the Lord. Oof, that's good. Which makes a lot of sense. You know, mm-hmm. forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Right. That's what the cross looks like. So you're closer to the cross. Wow. That's the good, quicker bro. you say that. Yeah. You know? So now that there aren't two Simons anymore, can I have my name back? Oh. No. <laughs> that was funny. I like really, that. Did that really just happen? That was funny. That was good. He's like, don't call me Z. <laughs> it's like, can I have my name back? I liked it. Which is really funny because I guess it's because he's Simon the Zealot. Right. Right. Which yeah. is funny because, you know, it's it not. Have, it wouldn't have been English. No. <laughs> was that the look? Does he want you to write down this conversation? With me? No. I'm supposed to be doing something else. Mm. I really like that. Yeah, that was fun. That's that whole thing where, you know, the Lord speaks to us, Mm -hmm. but it's oftentimes not in words. For sure. It's like a, Mm -hmm. and it's in that sense, it's not a look either because we don't get to see him usually, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but that's just so true, like experientially. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Where... You know the the ruach, the Holy Spirit, like mm-hmm. you you know mm-hmm. conviction mm-hmm. or you it's know, true. It's like, true. Yeah, that, that was conviction. Right? <laughs> yeah. you know what you're supposed to do. Morning. I'm sorry. I said good morning. No, I heard you. I said I'm sorry for what I did to you. It has been over a year now, and I realize I never actually apologized for my role in your plight with your tax debt and for colluding with Quintus on reporting your activity. It's strange. After the sermon, the big one, I immediately went to my parents to apologize for my actions. I should have gone to you next. And now my feelings are worse and they won't be better if I don't ask for your forgiveness, so that's what I'm doing now. Well, actually, I'm just saying I'm sorry. Forgiveness is a gift that you can give. Or not give. Two, 
Mm. Yeah. It burns, doesn't it? it? It's it's a it's a toughie. It burns. Yeah. I, I think there's a good lesson in there of just like the obedience factor, and uh, on the Matthew side, right? I just have to I just have to apologize. And that's that. And then it's the other person's job mm-hmm. to, you know, do their thing with the Lord too, you mm-hmm. know. But owning ownership and and taking responsibility for your actions and repenting of them, that's that's your job. Yeah. That's your job in repentance. Right. So I think there's a good Good lesson in there yeah. that it's that is a big deal, and then also to understand that especially if you've actually like hurt someone, that if that they they might have to process a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the reality of relationships. So, and yet, I would say that it's not okay for Peter to respond that way. Sure. It's right. like back to right. you. You have to receive. In fact, he he should have already forgiven yeah. Matthew. Yeah. Before Matthew ever even came. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's, reality. That's our responsibility right? as the one. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that's easy. That I always do that or something. Right. Like <laughs> right. But I mean, that's why it burns so much to watch him just not respond with the walk away yeah because it's like no forgive them he didn't he didn't know yeah. what he was doing that's not right like he, i and, mean he's just a new believer right but i guess so is peter yeah <laughs> that, that's then that's the flip side of the other yeah. job of you know the person being asked to forgive is that as followers of yeshua that's we're we are forgivers yeah that's what we do that's what we do yeah that's right good. i like that even even if even if there are the people that aren't asking forgiveness, yeah. like you're saying, right? right? It's like, that's that's Yeshua's prayer. It's like, forgive us our sins as we also have, have forgiven those who have sinned against us. It's good. Not those that have apologized to us. <laughs> that's really good. Right? That's really good. <laughs> yeah. So. I love them. That, that's who we are. That's who we are. We repent Mm -hmm. and we forget 100 percent. that's what we do that's good that's what kingdom people do right and they're quick to repent and they're quick to forget yeah you know yeah i mean yeshua says and if you don't forgive Mm -hmm. then your father won't forgive you you won't be forgiven yeah that's real that's one of those passages it's like you're like whoa whoa you sure that's in there you know it's like who am i to hold anything against anyone ever right Right. Yeah. And so, it's in that really sense, the the litmus test mm-hmm. on our own forgiveness is: Do we forgive others? Are you forgiving others? of the earth, right? Hmm? It's over. Hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Oof.
Oof. That's leadership. That, yeah. That's leadership. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, because then you're like, I'll follow that kind of a man. Right. Right. I mean, I love how, like, mm -hmm. it's like the upside down kingdom where when somebody repents and then <clears throat> forgives and then it's just like, yeah, that's the kind of guy you respect. Yep. Yep. That's the kind of guy you want to run with. That's yep. the kind of person that you want to be. And I feel like the best chosen moments are these like forgiveness oh, moments. Yeah. It reminds me when yeah. Yeshua and Mary Magdalene have mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, because we've all been oh, forgiven. Man. It's it's some of the most powerful words in like human history. In human is, life, it's good. I forgive you. Wow, it's good. Oof. Or you're forgiven. What right. whatever, you know, it's just that release, that that burden gone right freedom right it's incomparable right and it brings unity right yeah. then it was like all immediately it was like to the ends of the to earth. the ends of their together yeah right yeah yeah it's that togetherness mm -hmm. it's that unity it's like how do we come mm. together in unity what it demands yeah. repentance and forgiveness yep, yep. you know mm -hmm. <laughs> that we you know would be one. Yes. That only happens with that posture. Oneness only happens with humility, repentance, yeah. forgiveness. The only way. So good. Man, that's, that's great. And a hug. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Sealed by a hug. Sealed by the hug. Hey, if you like our videos, don't forget to become a Grafted Ambassador. Click on the link in the description below. How is your ancient Roman dialects? Uh, no bueno. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my thought. Mm. Apology rejected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not my arsenal, but I want to use it. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs>